어, 안녕하세요. 저는 돼지 배운 배 정대리입니다. 어, 오늘은 어, 스페인에서 오신 굉장히 유명한 아프리카 돼지 열병의 전문가인 호세 마누엘 박사님을 모시고 아프리카 돼지 열병의 어, 현재 상황과 아프리카 돼지 열병이 어떻게 진행될지 그리고 또 어떤 것들을 하면 우리가 아프리카 열병을 아프리카 돼지 열병을 좀 대비할 수 있을지에 대해서 어, 간단하게 이야기를 나누어 보도록 하겠습니다. 닥터 호세, could you please introduce yourself? Oh, okay. My name is Jose Manuel Sanchez Vizcaino. I am veterinarian and full professor of animal health at the University of Madrid, as well as the director of the OIE Reference Laboratory for African Swine Fever, located also in my university in Madrid, Spain. Mm. Okay, uh, could you please explain about the current global situation of African Swine Fever? Sure. African swine fever now is really out of control. Uh, this is uh, already affecting three continents, Africa, Europe, and Asia. And it's important to, to remember that in uh, Europe and Asia is leaving the 78% of the total swine production. So that's mean that today, 78% of the swine of the world are living an affected area. So that is very worrying for the swine industry. I think it's the, the worst situation for the, it's the worst threat for sure of the swine industry around the world. Many people are wondering how China is doing right now. So could you please, could you briefly explain about the China, Chinese situation? Sure. China is suffering a lot at this moment because the disease is spread very quickly. So only in seven months, they almost infected the whole country, as well as other countries in the area, like Vietnam, Cambodia, Hong Kong also. And so the, the disease spread very, very quickly. It's probably uh, due to many factors, uh, risk factors that the Chinese industry used to have, historical and probably related with their with, with their own system and their sociology, but the disease is spreading very, very fast. So at this moment, in, in all Asia, the people are terribly worried that the disease could spread even more countries in the, in the Asian, Asian continent. So now, uh, what are the characteristics of African swine fever virus? Well, one of the characteristics of African swine fever is that it's really not well known uh, virus. People confuse African swine fever with other viruses and so that, that make uh, quite a lot of confusions to control the disease in an appropriate way. So African swine fever is not terribly contagious and is not making high, high mortality of 100%. It's a disease that also has a lot of variations depending on the virus itself. There are from attenuated strain to very acute or even asymptomatic uh, virus. And uh, the way how the ASF is spread is completely different than classical swine fever or uh, food and mouth or PRRS. So African swine fever is not very efficient in the transmission by aerosol, but is terribly resistant. So one of the strong points of African swine fever is that it's a very resistant virus in the environment. So when you have the virus in one car case or just in the field, the virus is going to resist for many, many, uh, for long period of time. Also, the virus is not only resistant, but also they are very easy to, tra to transmit by blood because the virus is, uh, the virus is attached to the retrocytes so in one single drop of blood, you can find more than 3,000 copies of the virus. So blood is the mechanism that make main trans transmissions. And in some places, the people use blood for feed animal, or sometimes they use soil feeding. So that means uh, that they use meat that has been produced, swine meat that has been produced from infected pigs. So the virus resists a lot in that conditions, and this is one of the other mechanisms. So the, the most important is 
three points. One, the, the contact between direct animals, that means sick, or carriers, and ASF also carrier animals are present. The contact between domestic or wild boar affected for the disease with domestic or with wild boar is one mechanism of infection, especially if they fight or discuss and some blood is produced. Because as I mentioned, in blood is very easy. Also, if the animals have, the sick animal have diarrhea, it's a fantastic way of uh, transmission. So this is one mechanism. So we have to be careful with, uh, when the animals are in contact with your own animals. So you have to make by your safety to avoid that the wild boar can contact your, your domestic animal. The other mechanism is very important is the swill feeding. So use leftover of human diseases, that, that or human food, excuse me, that has been produced with meat of, of sick animals, sick ASF animal. So in this uh, meat, the virus is going very, to be very, very resistant as well. So if you give the leftover to the pigs, they're going to become infected very easy. So be careful with the soil feeding. This is another important mechanism. Be careful with that. This is very, very important. The third one is when you do a necropsis and you and your farm and you are taking blood all over, you are not carried fully with the necropsies and there's blood all over and you don't clean or disinfect it well. Later, you are going to propagate the virus in your farm. So be careful with the necrosis, be careful with blood. This is terribly important. And I, I think this is a very important. Also in summer, you have to remember that if, if it's, uh, blood is there in your farm or you are doing uh, a necropsis and it's summer and it's flight around, the flights are going to be vector, mechanic vector of the blood. They don't replicate it in, the, the virus don't replicate it in flights, but the flights can transport it by the legs from one farm to another. So the vehicles that are contaminated with blood or with diarrhea, that is terrible if they are not clean and disinfected. So be careful with the transportation of animal and trucks that are not clean and disinfected. This is another very important mechanism. I think these are the most, the four most important mechanisms of transmission. What will be the most yeah. dangerous risk factors in Korea? Well, uh, the most important is uh, several factors. The first one is if you are importing meat that is contaminated because you are you bring the meat from another infected country, that could be a very high risk because you are going to process the meat and later they can be uh, soil feeding. That is a, a good way. The other way is the entrance of live animals. So live animals is, is difficult because you are not importing live animals from any infected country. So I don't think this is danger, but could be the wild boar. The wild boar can, can come from areas in the continent, in Asia continents that are infected, and they can come by, by crossing the border or by swimming or many, many different ways. So the wild boar are also a very important way of contamination. Persons that came from infected countries with food and for human, but they not only use for human, also they can give it to the animals direct or an indirect way, this is a very common way of infection. So you have to be careful with all the uh, tourists that came by boat or by airport, especially more in boat, because the control is, is usually more poor than in airport, that they don't bring any feed or any food that can be produced with, with swine. So that is uh, very, very important. And the last one is vehicles. Uh, they can, you know, vehicles that can transport pigs here, but they are from countries that are infected and they are not well cleaned or disinfected. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so how, how can we stop the introduction of African swine fever virus to Korea? Well, uh, there are two ways to, to, to stop that. 
One is a, a national level, so controlling the airport, controlling the harbor, controlling the wild boar in, in some areas of, of your country that are not depending on the farmers, but are very important. Controlling the soil feeding, not producing soil feeding yourself. I think this is very important, and I think you need to tell the farmers which are the most important mechanisms of transmissions because most of the farmers don't know that and it's important that they know it. So this is the first, uh, the first help. is a level of the authorities or, or the farmer association to inform all this situation to farmers. The other point is in hands of the farmers and how the virus can come inside of one farm. They can come by vehicles, contaminated vehicles, so they have to be very careful with the disinfection of these vehicles. The other point is that they can bring it with the worker of the farms, that they bring their own food, and this food could be contaminated. So that's a very important issue. So you have to tell the people, be careful, don't bring food never from swine origin to the farms. The third one are visitors, that they came to see the farms or to buy your animals, you have to take shower of all these guys, change complete the clothes, especially shoes. The shoes have to be out, totally out, and, and, and change it to, with your own clothes. That is uh, very important as well. And finally, the biosecurity of the farms to avoid the contact with the wild boar, because this is another source of contamination. So you have to put double, fa double fence because the, the, the wild boar jumping quite well or they going under the, under the floor and they crossing easily. So you need a double fence to really be, be strong in the contact, to avoid the contact with the wild boar. And right. these are the main, the main important points to, to do and to follow in. To the farmer, which responsibility they have? And the, the most important responsibility of farmers mm -hmm. and vets is the early detection. That's very important. Because, you know, for example, if tomorrow happened in Spain and we have one, two, even three on break, we can stop. No trouble. If we do in an early detection. Now, if we don't, don't detect the first one and they expect two other and two other, two other, this, that is difficult, you know? But if it's one on break, too great, you, you can easily stop the virus right. because you know the mechanism. You have to know exactly who are the connections between one part and the other. You can see how mechanism could be the ones that are working and you can go ahead. You have an incubation period that's going between, the incubation period is going between 48, three, three days, four days before the animal is expressed and released virus. So you have almost five days. Five days is a lot to stop the secondary outbreak. Mm -hmm. Because if you have a farm that they have already ASF, the clinical explosion of ASF, so you have to go back five, six days about it and, and look all what they are doing. Which are the vehicles, which are the people visiting, where everything, and stop it, you know? But if you, don't know nothing and you are you just be quiet by the time that the people going to the scuba they're going to be 10 or 20 mm -hmm. and sometimes very far away one or the other that's forget it you are lost the fight